How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to City Skylines. Welcome back to Plazas and Promenades. And welcome back to the city of Nerdhull. In the last episode, we finally got around to starting to build Nerdholm Institute. And I say starting to build because it's not finished. There's a lot of things we need to unlock. There's a lot more things we need to build. And this is just currently a lot of empty space without a lot of purpose. And that is something that I really want to fix. We also came down to the south and built Campus Park, which is mostly a residential space, but it's right next to Nerdholm Institute. And I thought it would be a great idea to put some kind of high capacity hospital in here because when I was researching universities after I asked all of you to suggest some and we went and looked on uh, Google Maps I noticed that a lot of them had hospitals next to them and so I thought that the high capacity hospital was fitting for this space since it's kind of modern looking and most of the buildings in here are European. And then finally, we got to work on Manor Trail, which is our first nature reserve. The first of many, I'm sure. I'm probably gonna build a bunch of these once we start getting out into the wider map, which is something we'll talk about in just a second. I did ask about unlocking all of the 81 tiles on the map in that last episode. We'll talk about that in just a second. Manor Trail, I love it. I love the contrast between the university dormitories and the nature that we have down here and that's a contrast that i want to continue at some point probably today as we expand manor trail just a little bit now there are a few other things that i want to talk about a few more orders of business but before we get to those i do want to point out that nerd home institute has achieved a recognized reputation level it is however gonna fall back down to unrecognized because the number of students has fallen beneath 500. The reason for this is because we are starting to see a bit of a death wave creeping up on the city. I've sort of been keeping an eye on this. The population peaked around 43 to 44,000. We're down to 40,500 people. So we are going through a death wave. We are going to see the Institute drop down to a single star again. But honestly, that's okay because we've already unlocked a few more things. We have the University Outdoor Study. We have the University Gymnasium. We have the University Cafeteria and we have the University Fountain. So we can play with all of those things. And even if this place drops down to one star, we can still play with those. We absolutely will, and we'll absolutely get those in here. But before we start looking at the university, let's talk a little bit about Dale Hills. Dale Hills, of course, being our largest European district. You might remember it used to have an empty triangle between its uh, main section, I guess, and Vermont district. I've decided to fill that with a park that happens to have two high capacity elementary schools right in the middle of it. Each of these can have up to a thousand students. So we now have room for 2000 elementary students right here in Dale Hills. Again, I'm going to say the C word. I love the contrast between the European buildings and these two elementary schools. I love the paths around it. I love that this space is just pedestrianized and it's all about the people and I will say I was very conscious about not just lining all of these paths with fences. That is a bit of feedback I've seen quite a few times that I like to line things with fences. So I went a little bit heavier on the, I guess the, the what is it, the, what is, what's it, the fauna, flora, flora. I went heavier on the flora around here. So we have a lot of trees and bushes and a bit of pink and some purples. And of course, some bollards to designate the fact that this is in fact a pedestrianized space and they continue the entire way around they go across the pedestrian roads of course we even have a doubled up uh, large fountain plaza with a tree in the middle and i think it looks pretty great i really like how this space turned out and uh, that's actually not the only change to dale hills or vermont district i came down here and filled in all of this space as well nothing too crazy going on here we do have some paths around the backs of the buildings we do have some trees lining the highways we do have some angles down here but for the most part 
it is just a bunch of zoning to fill up the space and uh, fill in the gaps between Vermont and Dale and the highway. The only interesting things here, I suppose, would be the addition of a large underground metro station in the southern section of Vermont District. It actually connects via the Purple Line up to our main metro plaza. But as well as that, we also have a high school in here. Just a generic one. 1,250 students, though. It's nothing to sniff at. And again, it has just a little bit of detailing around here just to place it into a corner that was otherwise completely unoccupied. And of course, you know, Move It was used to push it back a little bit. Some bollards were there to, you know, designate it as a pedestrian space. And we cut out some space for the cars to park. I like, I like the space. I think it turned out really well. And again, we get to use my favorite word, which is contrast between this building and buildings like this. And again, I think it looks really good. And then our final addition is that of another partial cloverleaf interchange. This time connecting the highway near our bridge to an area that just passes the, I guess, Manor Trail Nature Reserve. I figured getting another connection to the highway in here would be a pretty good idea because this is a space that I want to develop. And it's a space that I'd like to develop today because again, I want to see some buildings right up against Manor Trail. And so this will not only alleviate some of the traffic stresses that we have down here at the main entrance to the city, which by the way, did get a little bit of love. I have gone ahead and extended Oak Garden down here. I've put the trees around. I have some paths going under this main avenue and I have another, a third small glass roof plaza. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This new entrance to the city will reduce traffic stress around Oak Garden. That's essentially the main focus. And also, it let me introduce a little bit of a curve to uh, an otherwise very straight highway here. And so I like this. I think it's pretty cool. And I think it gives us an interesting space to play with. And so I think that's maybe where we can start today. But before we do that, I have one really important question. I mentioned towards the start of this series that Oak Garden and the road surrounded by oak trees was inspired by some of the roads that lead up towards Buckingham Palace in London. And so my question is very simple. What do we call this road? Leave your suggestions in the comments below and I will pick my favorite or will pick the most, I guess, liked or thumbs up comments and we'll go with that for a name for this road. It can be whatever you want, just something that seems fitting for the road would be nice, and uh, we can go with that. I don't have road names switched on in City Skylines, I should mention that, but this will be the official name of the road, even if road names aren't switched on. Even if you can't see it, we'll all know that that's the name of this road. Anyway, enough of all that, let's talk about this new space that we have to play with, and I want to talk about why I'm starting with this space in the middle of a death wave. Something I'm trying to do with this series is, and I mentioned this last time, I want to make sure that we're still playing city skylines. We're not just painting a city. I want to grow the city. And so that's what I want to do in here. I want this to be a space where a lot of people live and can work. I want this to be a space with offices. I want it to be a multi-purpose district, but I also don't want it to be European. So we're going to have to figure out what style exactly we want on this. And to be honest, I'm thinking we might go for modern city sensor on this one, which might be a bit weird given that it's not really a city sensor, but those buildings will be about the same height. At least the commercial buildings will be about the same height as these European buildings. So I think that's probably what we'll do. But what we need to do first is get some zoning on these roads. So we're going to force zoning onto this and we're going to prioritize the older roads for this little section and then prioritize the newer roads for this section so that we keep zoning on the avenue, which is uh, very important as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we can bring some zoning around here as well. And this entire space is very much going to be zoned. I want buildings along the highway, same as what we have over here. 
So that gives us all of that zoning. This road right here, I want some zoning on as well. So we'll go ahead to the six lane road with median trees. We're going to make sure that collisions are, well, collisions don't really matter actually. So we'll just, you know, go ahead and force some zoning right there. And we'll bring the zoning the entire way around to about there. And we can also get it on this uh, little central road in here, which is going to be this guy. And we will go ahead and force zoning, prioritizing the newer roads. So this guy got the zoning priority, which is fantastic. And what I think I'm actually going to do is go for the four lane road with decorative trees. So it ties into the six lane road with median trees. And I'm also going to go in and change those trees because there was a comment that I saw that reminded me that I can do this. And I've seen a couple of comments talking about how the little oak trees, as nice as they are, they aren't the best. And that uh, these young lindens, of course, would be much better. And I have to agree. I think the shade of green on those is just a little bit more satisfying and a little bit more pleasant to look at. So we'll go ahead and swap out these trees. And I've already swapped these ones out. And we can do the same down here as well. Although if I wanted to, I could do this. But I think that's a little bit much. I think that's a little bit, uh, a little bit too crazy, a little bit too, uh, a little bit too big in terms of trees. We could go for these if we wanted a, uh, a Miami or is it a Miami vibe or an LA vibe? I guess it's either, right? But no, we'll stick with the Young Lindens. They look, uh, they look pretty great right there, and uh, that's perfect. So that's going to be our outskirts of this new district, and I'm immediately going to start with some zoning. Because, like I said, we're going modern city center. So we want to start, I guess, with this square on the left. And what I can do is kind of fill in all of that space. And if we set this as a district with that modern city center uh, style, it will immediately start building those buildings. Because we do actually have a decent little chunk of commercial demand. So we'll paint this in here. We'll see what name it is that we get. We get Mulberry District, which is fine. And actually, I'm going to make two separate districts. So if I really wanted to, I can have one of them be Modern City Center. And I can have another one be whatever else. We could have the wall-to-wall -wall style, which I think we can do wall-to-wall -wall anyway. Highland Hills, I, I guess, is a reasonable name. I'll tell you what. I mentioned naming a road. Let's also get some uh, district name suggestions into the uh, comments as well. I will say, though, on that note, there's there's one or two people who, since one of the first episodes of this series, has been talking about naming a district Park Park Industrial Park. I have seen you. I've seen those comments. Don't you think I haven't been paying attention? I'm just, I'm biding my time. I'm just waiting. Because this industrial district, it's all right. But at some point, I'm going to completely rebuild it. Because I want to get some cargo trains in there. I want to get some decent uh, infrastructure into an industrial district. And at that point, that's probably when the good old Park Park Industrial Park is going to make a comeback. Now, actually, speaking of rebuilding things and uh, districts and zoning, I realized I mentioned I was going to talk about the 81 tiles, and I haven't yet. So let's talk about that while I do a little bit of building here. And uh, let's talk about the reason that I'm not going to be unlocking all 81 tiles. So I should say that at first I was very much in favor of unlocking everything. I was very much going to do that. And there were a decent number of comments that were like, hey, absolutely, absolutely do that. Unlock all the tiles, go nuts, go creative, you know, build all this stuff. And I was going to. And then I saw a comment that just hit me a certain way. And I don't mean in a bad way. It was it was a comment that when I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh boy, here we go. Because it started with, please don't take this the wrong way. And in, in my experience anyway, comments that start that way usually are something like, please don't take this the wrong way, but I think you're terrible. This comment wasn't that it was actually really lovely and i really appreciated it it was a comment that said uh, i was talking about how I, I don't remember exactly what it was or who it was but it was um essentially a comment saying that 
this person was really enjoying the series and they could tell that I was having fun with it as well. But they were concerned that if I unlock all tiles, what's going to happen is I'm going to go and build a million things at once and I'm going to get carried away and I'm going to get burned out and I'm going to abandon the series, which if you're new to the channel, you might not be aware that I do have a bit of a track record for not finishing things, which is, uh, it's a bit of a problem. It's, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. It's, uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a work in progress that way. Uh, I am trying to, uh, to make sure that series actually get, fin you know, finales and, and finish. This one, by the way, this, this series, as I've said, it's going to be around for a while, but, um, yeah, it was just this comment that was like, you know, I, I am enjoying the series. I don't want to see it end. I don't want to see it get abandoned. I can tell you're enjoying it. People are enjoying it. And it's nice to sort of progress through City Skylines rather than just going and unlocking everything. It was a really genuinely nice comment, especially since my initial response to it, I will admit, was very much seeing the please don't take this the wrong way. It was an eye roll and it was like, oh boy, here we go. So we're going to just go ahead and keep playing and we'll keep unlocking tiles. Eventually, when we get all nine tiles that you can originally get, we will have to start unlocking more, but uh, we'll just keep playing until we unlock everything. And then maybe at that point, we go ahead and start expanding a little bit. But I actually like the idea of just playing City Skylines, unlocking the tiles and seeing what happens. So that's essentially what we're going to do. We'll just keep playing. We'll see what happens. We'll keep unlocking things. We'll have a good time and we'll chill. So that's the plan. We will eventually get all 81 tiles. I want to build stuff all over this map. But for now, we're still getting started. It's only part 11 of a series. It feels like it's been a lot longer, which for me, it it, it has been. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. These episodes do take a little while to um to record. I'm not complaining. Well, I, I'm, I'm complaining, but only because I need to get more, I guess, uh, I need to get better at, uh, at using my time. I feel like uh, I, I spend I spend so much time setting up cinematic shots. I don't know if it really translates in the videos or not, but I'll I'll be flying around. I'm like, oh, is this shot right? Is that shot right? Does the camera go under that bridge? Does the camera go underneath those arches or does it go over them? And then you set up a shot and you wait for it to go because it's a time lapse. And then five minutes in, something goes wrong. It's 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 a whole thing, but it's fun. I'm I'm really enjoying it, and uh, the the feedback and the comments on this series have been lovely. Talking about the cinematic shots and talking about how it actually sounds like I'm enjoying City Skylines, which it's not to say that I haven't enjoyed City Skylines the last few times that I've played it, but um, just doing something different with it this time around has been uh, has been really nice. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> I don't know I don't know what I'm really. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to get at here, to be to be honest with you. I just, I, I appreciate the feedback and the comments and just everything. I'm just, I'm having fun. I'm really enjoying this. Anyway, Mulberry District, I think, is mostly going to be, I'm going to say, residential, commercial, a little bit of office. But I think what we'll do with this is we will go for Modern City Center. But I'm also going to go for a style. I'm going to go for... Oh, do I want to do wall-to-wall -wall residential? What does wall-to-wall -wall residential even look like? Let me have a quick look over here, because we do have some. It's these guys. I'm torn between wall-to-wall -wall residential or self-sufficient residential. And I'm almost thinking self-sufficient because it's going to be right next to Manor Trail. So let's do, let's do self-sufficient. I think that'll be pretty good. And uh, I guess before we let this build, we need to get some pipes in here. And yes, I know I actually just remembered this almost never happens. Someone get the camera. But no, what I'd, what I'd actually like to do is get some education in here. Elementary school availability is pretty good in the city. But as the population comes back up, we're going to have more people needing elementary schools. And elementary coverage in this area is these two community schools. It's not a whole lot else. Uh, high school coverage in this area is non-existent, so I guess we have a choice. We could go for a high school in here. Not that there's necessarily any room for it, except for uh, this space here, which honestly, a high school in that corner 
might not be a bad idea. It would get rid of the weird zoning in that corner, which I'm not against doing. A very weird building to have opposite the uh, opposite these guys, but I'm I'm kind of here for it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll allow that to be a thing. I'll tell you what I would like to do, though. I want to go and get a little path and just push it straight through here. So people can actually walk underneath the high school to get to this residential space. And I just think that's kind of cool. I just think that's kind of interesting to do. Um, I would also like to do this. I know it's a little bit weird, but I'm, I'm kind of here for the, the weird and I'm kind of here for the wonderful. So we'll do this to give people a way to walk through there. And we can get some trees into all this space when it builds. And I suppose, speaking of building, let's run the simulation and see what this looks like. And just like that, Mulberry District is building. It's coming along. It's looking good. It's got a nice mix of buildings, a nice mix of styles. It's a district. It's not really anything too crazy special, but it is a really nice combination of styles. I think the self-sufficient houses and the modern city center shops happen to look really good. I think it's a really good combination of styles. I think you get those smaller buildings on the outsides and then the much, well, not the much taller, but definitely the taller buildings on the inside. Now, something I think I will do with Mulberry District is actually go into policies and I'm going to put a high rise ban on this place. And hopefully that doesn't get rid of any of the existing buildings. But the reason I'm doing that, uh oh, oh, I don't know about that. That might have been a bit of a problem there. Uh, the reason I'm doing that, though, we'll speed things up to make sure things aren't disappearing. It's actually very simple. I don't want these super tall buildings. Now, this looks beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful tower, but I don't want that over here. I want the slightly smaller buildings. And interestingly, we are seeing some buildings get uh, get knocked down via the policy, but I think we'll see them rebuild. I think we'll see them figure it out. And I think everything will be okay. And I think this is a pretty good little district. Although I would like to go in and I would like to get something kind of natural in here. And I'm thinking this corner right about here might be really good for it. So if we take out those buildings, and we go in, have we got any plazas that we could play with? I mean, we have we have a few. We have these guys. We have the large fountain plazas if we wanted to go a bit bigger. But I think something simple like the flower plaza right on that corner will just look really nice. Just something a bit natural to give people somewhere to chill, somewhere to hang out, you know? We can bring some paths down here and down there to uh, nicely surround this thing and uh, give people more connections and ways to get to it. People from uh, over here, for example, can just walk straight through. People from uh, around here can kind of walk around now. And uh, that's good. That's what we're looking for. Now, let's just go ahead and level this thing a little bit because it does look a little bit weird. Get it to the same height as that building. And uh, actually, you know what? We'll bring that back down because it's looking a little weird that it has this, uh, this curb around it. Well, actually, you know what? I don't hate that. I, it, it's, the whole plaza is visible. That's what's important. Uh, let's also just build those, some buildings there to uh, give them room to redevelop. And that's fine. Nothing crazy. It's, it's not a super, super detailed district, but I think just mixing the styles helps to uh, create something that looks a little bit more thought out and that looks a little bit more interesting than it really is. I think we can also go ahead and... Well, I would put some paths back here, but I don't know that we need them. I guess what we can do is turn collisions back on. We can turn off tree anarchy. And if we grab the tree brush and use the nerd hole main brush, I can just go with a bit more strength and just fill in these gaps back here with some trees. So that we're once again lining the, uh, the highway right there with a few trees. And uh, there we go. It's a little bit overgrown, I'll admit, but it, it ties things together. It continues right into uh, Oak Garden as well. So that gives us that space lined. It gives us more buildings along the highway, and uh, it is going to give us a bit of traffic in here. So let's go ahead and see if we can change up some of these signs. And while I'm doing this, there's another 
little thing that I want to talk about, which is, it's a bit of a meta conversation, but it's actually how I talk. I mentioned, I know I mentioned it in Software Inc. I don't know if I mentioned it in City Skylines, but I mentioned at one point that my way of talking had kind of changed because I was sort of having issues with my, my, my lungs and my ability to uh, breathe, basically. Not in a super major way, although admittedly any sort of change to breathing is a little bit concerning and it's something I'm, I'm kind of following up with my uh, with my doctors. But I'd mentioned that uh, last year I had COVID-19 and uh, ever since I've, I've kind of had issue with projecting my voice as much as I usually do. And I know it sounds silly, it's not like I'm on stage having to project my voice, but I did a lot of um, a lot of acting in uh, high school and I did some acting in college. We did some movies and stuff where I had to talk and, and make sure I could be heard and talk in a certain way and just I've done YouTube for a really long time so the way I talk and the whole projecting my voice thing is just something that I do whether or not I need to is irrelevant or it was something I did because I don't really do it as much as I used to because I, I can't uh, or I couldn't. It's it's basically coming and going is is what I'm getting at. If you have watched any of the uh, the prison architect stuff I've done recently, I was I was yelling. I was yelling up a storm in uh, in prison architect. And then another video goes out in the channel and it's software ink and we're back to this whole like, hey, welcome back everybody. I'm talking all soft like. It's um it's it's weird and I'm I'm not doing it on purpose is is what I'm getting at. I uh there, there are good days for breathing, and there are bad days for breathing. Is is basically the uh, the takeaway. There are some days where I can I can catch my breath really well, and some days where I can't. And uh, again, it's you know, it's it's stuff that I'm I'm following up with my doctor. It's stuff that I'm I'm looking into. We're trying to see if there's anything crazy going on or anything I can do to sort of help it a little bit. Uh, but it's just that's just that's just what's going on. That's why these cities videos. To be to be perfectly honest, I the first episode of this series, I sat down to record it a few different times because I just didn't I I didn't feel right with how I was um how I was doing it in terms of like I thought the commentary was kind of rough, but the commentary was rough because I was sitting there and I'm like, man, I'm trying to do this like hype, like, hey, welcome back to City Skylines, woo! Like all that. I just couldn't physically keep it up for a long video and so I got really annoyed with myself and I was like man I just I don't know what to do here like do I do another city series do I just like you know do I just stop making videos until I can talk like what, what do I do here and I just sat down and went well I've kind of had this idea for a little bit what if we did like a city skyline series with b-roll and like a softer commentary and it it it's actually kind of fun. It's it's been a really fun creative process to um you know do the cinematics and and just all of that. You know, it's not high art, but it's it's fun. It's been really really fun and uh like I said earlier, the feedback has been uh has been kind of great. So, I'm I'm glad I'm I'm glad people seem to be enjoying it. I'm enjoying it as well. It's just I I wanted to talk about it because I I know that sometimes, even in these videos, you know, certain parts are going to be, you know, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more power in my voice than, uh, than others. And certain episodes have more power than others. And it's, I, I'm sure watching this through, if anyone does happen to, I don't want to say marathon these, but, you know, if you're going through from one episode to the next and like one episode, I'm not whispering, but I'm like, hey, welcome back to City Skylines. And the next one, I'm like, hello, it is I. I'm playing because <laughs> because that, <laughs> that's that's what my videos were <laughs> that's exactly what my videos used to be like that's exactly what my commentary used to be hello it is I <laughs> welcome back to city skylines <laughs> today we're going to be building roads that's um <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh man that's gonna be that that alone is gonna be really jarring if uh if someone's marathoning this from like a, you know, bunch of happy little trees in the last episode to uh, 
knock off Brian Blessed with a cold. <laughs> Now, when it comes to Highland Hills, I was going to use essentially the normal style that City Skylines gives for a district. And then I realized that it just, next to the modern city center stuff, it just doesn't really hold a candle. So I've changed the style. It is now modern city center. Although the residential buildings are going to remain the default city's skylines style. Because some of these are pretty great. Some of them, I mean, I don't I don't love this. I'll be honest. I don't I don't adore this. But this building is I mean it's it's not inherently beautiful, but as far as as assets go in the game, what I mean is it's a good looking building in the game. It's nicely detailed. It's got some great, uh, great texture on the walls and it's not crazy tall. And that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't want anything that's going to be crazy, crazy tall in here because I, I sort of want to bring this uh, this nature reserve the entire way around. So that's potentially going to be the next project. Although, maybe we should turn our attention to Nerd Home Institute. It has dropped down, by the way, to a uh, an unrecognized campus, but the population's climbing again. We're up to 147 people, 43,000 people in the city. We're probably going to see a lot of traffic coming in because uh, we got a lot of growth in here, but we're also still seeing a death wave. So the population has gone up, but the death wave is still very much active. And actually thinking about that, Death care is not really a thing in this entire section of the city. So let's throw a, uh, a crematorium right about there. And let's see, where else can I throw in a, uh, a cheeky crematorium? That's, that's a very good question. Where can I throw a cheeky crematorium? I guess down here if I wanted to. In here would be kind of ideal though. So turn collisions back on and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw a crematorium right into the middle of this district just so that we have got coverage across all of this space. It's not the nicest thing to have in the middle of your district, but it is kind of necessary. So I guess we just let that build. I guess that's kind of where we are. Although thinking about it, I do want to bring my trees over here. And I I feel like that's almost too dense. I'm going to be honest. Hold on. Bring, bring that all back a little bit. Bring it back to like... Uh, about there let's bring that strength down bring that density down and now let's hit it and that's a little better maybe a little bit more density uh, maybe a little bit less density maybe a little bit more strength yeah i think that's a bit more reasonable it's uh it's still pretty dense but it's not quite as crazy as what we had before and it is creating some gaps as well which makes it look a little bit more natural rather than just this man-made wall of trees which I mean, that's, that's what it is, but it looks less like a man-made wall of trees when I do it this way. So that's, that's how we're going to go here. Actually, you know what I want to do before we leave this space? I want to use this area for something unique. I want to use it for something different. So I'm going to take out all of this zoning. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is take out all of this path as well. And I'm going to see... If this guy, the disaster response unit, can maybe fit into that space. And annoyingly, it, it actually can't. But if I was to take out some roads, I could I could make it fit. Or I could put it I could put it anywhere else. I mean, does this thing have uh, does this thing have any sort of uh, pollution? It has noise pollution, which people might not necessarily love, but it's also not necessarily the end of the world. It's it's kind of tempting, weirdly. I know this is a weird place for something like the disaster response unit, but I think it would be an interesting place for it. Or we could throw something like the deep space radar in here. That'd be a bit weird. Or just anything, really. I just want something unique for this space rather than just more district. So, for example, we could put a shopping center in here. We could put something like the cinema in here which actually might be exactly what we do shopping centers cinemas turn this into like a not a pedestrianized area it's not going to be a pedestrian zone but sort of make it look 
like it kind of is one. They also have like the office zone landmark, which is a really cool looking building, but we're not going to be building that right now. Unless we, well, we could actually, we could put a couple of those guys in here. We have the residential zone landmark and we have the commercial zone landmark as well. But let's take a little look and see what else we have to play with. We do have things like the transport tower, which I think it would just look a little bit out of place in here. We have the mole of moderation, which again, I think would look a bit out of place in here. And I think at this point we start to get into much larger buildings that are generally going to look a bit out of place in here. So I think it's safe to say we are going to be limited a little bit on what we could do here. We do have things like downtown hotels as well. We have these, uh, what is this? The modern Japan content. We have these old sort of hotels from the seaside resorts uh, creator pack as well. But I think what we do is we go with the cinema, we go with the shopping center, and we turn this into sort of a big uh, plaza looking space. So we'll do the shopping centers there and we can do the cinema, honestly, I'm going to say right about there. And that does give us, well, I don't like the side of the cinema looking like that. What if we did a road between those? Again, it's not strictly going to be a pedestrian road uh, because I don't really want to put a pedestrian zone in here because then we need service points. But if we do, if we do this, we get that nice curvy glass corner. We get the nice curvy corner on this. It's two sort of service buildings, not service buildings, but commercial buildings facing each other and I think that's just more interesting right than just a bunch more buildings so let's bring this guy back just a little bit to about there and let's see what else we could throw at this space because there's got to be there's got to be something right we could do again we could look at some of these unique buildings here we could look at this guy I just want either plazas or a music club, for example. It actually fits there pretty nicely. Again, it's a, it's a weird looking building, but I don't I don't totally dislike it either. I am wondering though, if I just move it into the side of the cinema, does that That looks okay to me, to be quite honest. I don't I don't totally dislike that. It makes it kind of look like yeah, it makes it look like it is, it's kind of like two, it's, it's a street, right? It's a, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's two buildings that have been built right next to each other. It's wall to wall buildings. I, I actually like that a lot. You know, I think this will do a good enough job for this space for now. I think if I wanted to put more stuff in here, I'd need to go to the Steam Workshop and download some props. And I don't really want to do that. I'm trying to avoid downloading more than I really urgently need for nerd home and so yeah i think this is fine we have a couple of parks in here we have some little greenery we have some benches we have some space for people to eat there is a lot more open space than i'd like but maybe we come back here at some point and figure that out but for now i think that's two new districts i think that's a good little addition to the city down here and i think it looks really good the way it just curves around like that i'm really really pleased with that now i would like to turn my attention to nerd home institute i'm gonna try and not have this episode be just a repeat of the last one because to be quite honest what i was considering doing was looking at the campus and then extending manor trail around this uh this coastline here so it really you know follows along with these new districts which would just essentially be a copy of the last episode right we built the university, then we built this, and then we built this. Except this time, we built this. And now we're doing this, and then we do that. So, I'll try and squeeze something a little bit different in here rather than just retreading the uh, the last episode. But no promises. But I do, I do want to turn my attention to this because I feel like we need to expand it. We have got buildings that would allow us to do that. We have the cafeteria, we have the gymnasium, we have the outdoor study, and we have the fountain. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to place the outdoor study right outside the School of Law because it essentially gives us a bit of a, a plaza type space in front of this really nice looking building. It also matches the trees to the building as well. 
Although I will say this isn't quite as as nice as I'd like it to be. And it also kind of blocks the view of the building where, hmm. Well, I don't know if we do that. We'll, we'll keep it there for now, but I'm not 100% sold on that. Uh, what I would like to do, though, is... Oh, wow, that's a lot of people. Yeah, what I would like to do is I would like to go in. I want to get this path here. And I want to come down like... Well, I need to turn on a lot of the, uh, the guides. I want to come down... Wait, that is... Oh, that is... That is an angle. Okay. I want to come down like this. And I want to go ahead and just push straight through this wall to, uh, to about, uh, about that spot. And then what we can do is go and grab some, uh, some wall sections, turn off collisions and do this and do this. We can bulldoze. You know what? We'll just use move it to do this because bulldozing, uh, bulldozing, bulldozing this wall is always a nightmare. So just go ahead and delete segments. We'll go ahead and grab the nodes and bring them over so they just touch the white edges of the path. And so that is something we could put a building on. Which I think could reasonably be either the cafeteria, which is a bit of a smaller building. Or it could be the gymnasium. Or, well, arguably it could be both. Uh, we could do multiple of the same building. Maybe a cafeteria and a gym here and another cafeteria over here. But I think for now, oh, do I want a gymnasium? Do I want a cafeteria? I think I'm going to go for the cafeteria. I think I like the idea of the, the cafeteria being relatively close to nature. There's just something about that that seems kind of wholesome. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I would also like to grab this node and just shuffle it to about there. And I want to raise that node to the height of the building so that the stairs are actually at ground level. And uh, we can also probably go ahead and throw a new node into uh, into that spot, which might have got weird, but I think it's, it's okay. And we can just lower it to the same height. So this is now on a little section of flat grand, grand, ground. Land and ground just turned into the word grand. Interesting. Um, a little bit of flat ground for uh, for that one. And then what I'd also like to do is I'd kind of like to push a path across here as well. So this is just going to go straight through that wall. But on this end, I kind of need it to connect there, which I don't think this is going to let me do. I don't think City Skylines is going to be very happy about me trying to connect this to uh, to that, uh, that path. So I'll overlap it and then we'll use Network Multi-Tool to, I'm pretty sure I can do this, to uh, intersect segments. So if I select you and you, they merge into one. I can delete that bit, and uh, that looks all right. A little bit of a steep section there, but not really too worried about it. I think that's fine. So let's head over. Let's chop out the sections of wall here that we're not going to be using. So we need to grab segments, and you, you, and you are being deleted. And then in terms of nodes, we push this one right up to the road, bring this back so it just touches the white, and bring you over so it just touches the white. And that gives us a few ways through there. And what we can also do is just go ahead and reconnect this, because I didn't realize it had been disconnected. Let's make sure everything is connecting, which it now is. And that looks fine, honestly. Uh, I would even be tempted to lower a couple more of these nodes down to that height, and then lower the building down to that height as well and just move the building right into this little corner because I just I just think the cafeteria is a really nice little building I do I, I like the little little chimneys on there I hope I, I, I'd hope to see smoke coming out of it but I'm not too sure I will so I might have to find some uh, some assets that do that for me so I can have some smoke coming out of there but I think what I'll also do is Maybe try and build a space around this where it looks like students can sit and eat. Although it is a three-story cafeteria with a balcony, so that might be a bit unnecessary. But I think it would be nice. I think a little, maybe a little little paved area that we can do some decals on to make it look a little bit more decorative could be kind of fun. So let's let's see what we can do here. I'm not going to spend forever on on this particular little building because I think that might be a bit excessive 
but I think we can have some fun with it. So I think this is a nice little start. I've just created a paved area and lined it with some of those concrete retaining walls or whatever they're called. Is that what it is? Concrete retaining wall network. Yes. Uh, lined it with that because I like using that as a bit of a curb. And I think what I'll do is just go ahead and throw some of these little trees in here. Because I think that looks quite nice as well. Although I would like to just ever so slightly center those. So it's a bit more like that. And then I think I might just do a bunch more of them behind the building as well. So, you know, something like this. Something a bit like this. And then maybe take out that one and that one. And honestly, it's not too bad. I should say these lines aren't perfectly straight. I'm not really too worried about that, though. It's not the uh, it's not the end of the world if things don't line up perfectly. I mean, it's it's uh, I would say it's nature and there's no straight lines in nature, but um, this isn't. It's a paved area. So that's that is entirely my bad. Uh, we'll just imagine that somewhere in the lore of Nerdholm Institute. Someone had their nephew come along for the day and lay the concrete and, uh, you know, it turned out a bit like this, which is, uh, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, it's fine, right? It adds a little bit of character to it. At least, I don't think it's a straight line. It, it does look a little bit off, but I'm not really super worried about it. Now, I think what I will do with this space is I'm going to look into a, uh, I think a fountain would be nice back here. I'm not really sure what kind of fountain to put back here or where to put the fountain, but let's go for, well, I guess let's kind of go for here, right? So it's sort of central on this road. It's sort of central on this one. It's, it's a weird little thing to have in here, but I'm kind of here for it. We could do this one, which would be able to fit right in one of these corners, although it is going to overhang the, uh, the actual space, which... I guess isn't the end of the world. It does look a bit like a pool though, which I don't know that I love. I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. I guess it'll do. I, once I surround it by trees, you might not be able to notice the bits that are hanging out right there. Uh, but for the rest of this, I, I honestly just want some tables is, is what I'm thinking. So we could go for these sort of decorative tables. And this is a very, very big area for tables. So I'm not necessarily going to say that all of this is going to be lined with tables, but let's start here and do a, uh, do a nice big, uh, line of them. And honestly, I, I love the idea of having some color in here. Uh, but we'll do something like, uh, we'll do something like that, right? So you can sit and have a conversation and not have the people at the next table just immediately hear everything you're saying. And we'll do something like this and we can just shuffle you along a little bit. And honestly, that's a bit weird, but I also don't totally hate it. And I think what we could do is down the middle here, throw in some flower beds. So if I start about here and I just drag this out to say there, we can bring these guys together. Something like, uh, something like this. I keep saying something like this. That's that's kind of becoming my new thing, and I really don't want it to because it's a really annoying phrase. It's just, oh yeah, we'll do it something like that, and then something like that. It's uh it's it's what it is, to be to be perfectly honest, is I'm making a really conscious effort to try and not uh do what I just did, not pause and go, uh, all the time. So I guess I've replaced me pausing and going, uh, with the phrase something like this, which is not not a great phrase to uh to replace anything with really but it is what it is i suppose uh let's go ahead and put i just said uh again i'm getting really conscious of how i'm talking <laughs> I'm, I'm doing that thing that i've talked about before where i start getting really conscious of uh of how i'm talking but uh, i think this looks good i think this is a nice little area for the cafeteria it's just pleasant it's got color to it it's bright it's it's fun it's friendly so i like that a lot and that means that the next thing we need to do is get the gymnasium in here and i don't know where that's gonna go maybe down in this space for the uh the gymnasium or over here perhaps for the gymnasium what if we were to continue these two paths straight up to uh to those roads 
that might not be a terrible idea because what we can do is line all of this with a bunch of trees and kind of continue the the trees from oak garden down through nerd home institute i kind of like that idea i think that's i think that's exactly what we're gonna do and you know i've got to be honest the super dense trees actually really i love them that's that's about all i got they look great i think they look fantastic around the university now you might have already spotted it but I have gone ahead and placed the university gymnasium and I did sort of a similar thing around this. I used a bunch of concrete and I used those retaining walls to make it feel like this thing is just, you know, it's surrounded by a nice little bit of a uh, nice little bit of garden there. We got some trees down this side as well, which actually I kind of want to uh, duplicate around here as well. I think it'll look really good having some, uh, some nice big trees around the uh, the gymnasium so we'll do this and uh, we'll do the same down this side as well and see if we can maybe get away with it uh maybe just bring those a little closer together something like that it's uh that's maybe a bit much actually i think i think we can maybe do without the trees on this side or at least without the huge trees on this side maybe something a little bit smaller will look a little bit more reasonable yeah I think that's okay. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but the reason for this existing is because I'm pretty sure if I type in uh, tennis, I mean, tennis uh, courts are a thing, but I think the decal, yeah. So I can get the decal for tennis courts, and I think I can do the same for uh, basketball as well. So what I want to do is I want to build out a couple of basketball courts, and I want to build out a couple of tennis courts. So essentially this, and then we want to get the uh, we want to get the hoop on one side right about there. Rotate this guy around, and we'll put the hoop on this side right about there. And basically that that's that's about what I want to do. And so we'll go in, we'll get props and decals, we'll grab this, we'll copy it, and we'll go. You know, there's a second one, and there's maybe a maybe a third one right about there. So three. Uh, basketball courts seems reasonable. Uh, in terms of tennis, I mean, we could do, I don't know how many of these to be, to be perfectly honest. We could have them sort of facing the, uh, the basketball courts if we really wanted to. We could just line them down here as well. We could probably space these out a little bit further as well, actually. So let's, let's, let's actually do that. Let's space these guys out a bit more. So something like this and something like like this. I don't, I dare me, there I go saying that again. Uh, every, every time I say that now, I'm going to notice and it's going to annoy me. But I think that's a little better. And I think moving them to maybe a slightly more central spot like, uh, like this is, is going to be for the best. In terms of tennis though, I mean, I'm not really too sure what to do with these because I'm also not 100% sure that I can actually get the, uh, the net for this. So we'll put the tennis court there. And if I type in net, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get it. I get a lot of network stuff. So what if I go and use a fence? What if I use the farm fence down the middle of this? This might look really silly. Uh, in fact, I, yeah, it does. It does look really silly, but I think it's about the only thing I'm going to get for a tennis court. So, I mean, is that... Oh, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> it looks really, really dumb. <laughs> oh, no. Um, we could use the concrete retaining wall network, but I <laughs> don't I don't know about that. Uh, no, not that one either. I think it's going to have to be the farm fence. I think I think that's what we're limited to here. Uh, so let's let's grab this. And uh, oh, man, it's not it's not my best work. Uh, I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to put another one uh, right about, say, there. And, uh, yeah, that's sports is is what that is. This is on a hill, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's on a bit of a slope. That's going to be a terrible game of tennis. That is going to be... That is going to be an awful, awful game of tennis. I haven't played tennis in years. I need to get back into playing tennis. I actually really enjoy it. I uh, Same with... Um, what's the other one? Badminton? I actually really enjoy badminton as well. It's... 
I'm not a sporty kind of guy, but I, I do I do enjoy mostly badminton, to be honest. Mostly because you can't really hurt yourself. I mean, you can if you try hard enough. <laughs> Believe me, I, you know, there's a few times I really couldn't be bothered doing badminton in, in high school and I would find a way to somehow injure myself and I'd be like, oh no, I can't play. And I, I would get a look and it was like, how have you managed to do that? This is, it's kind of sus that you always end up, you know, a bit injured, but all right. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever played, you know, badminton or, or tennis where the, uh, the court has been on a bit of a slope, but well, Nerd Home Institute, first times for everything. That's, that's what it is. That's, that's the promise here at the Institute. We will give you a, uh, a unique learning experience. Whether or not it's a good one is uh, irrelevant, frankly. It'll be, it'll be unique. And so there we go. We have an extension of the University Gymnasium. We have three basketball courts, two tennis courts, and uh, annoyingly, it looks like one of my fences has decided to disappear in there, so... I'm gonna have to go in and just very, very quickly uh, fix this because there is supposed to be a fence right there and it is supposed to extend to uh, to about that spot right there so that we have entrances to all the different courts. And that's this, this middle fence right here is because basically if a ball goes flying out, it hits this and it doesn't go into the other court. That's, that's the idea. This is all very deliberate. Uh, I did also connect some paths around here, but no one seems interested in, in using them. You can go from here to there, which there's not really any reason to do that. So, I mean, it makes sense that no one's really using that, but it's there just in case someone decides to, or I guess in case I put something in there that might entice someone to walk through that space. But I like that. I, I really like how the gymnasium's turned out. I think we've also got the uh, really cool little uh, cafeteria down here, or canteen, whatever it's called, cafeteria. I just need to figure out how to power this. Because, obviously, it's going to be a bit of a problem if this thing can't get power. The power, obviously, coming from roads. Yeah, not too sure. Not too sure what to do with that one. We could potentially put the university fountain in here and that might and does annoyingly uh bridge the gap i say annoyingly because i honestly don't know what to do with this thing it's it's a, it's not a bad looking fountain it's actually a beautiful one of the best looking fountains in the game but it just it's just the area around it that i don't love you know <laughs> I'd, I'd probably want to well i guess i could pave the space and then put some uh I could put some of that really bright grass down that we used somewhere over here. We used it, yeah, this this grass right here. We used that down by the uh, the theater as well, which, by the way, is looking really good now that all the, uh, the weird terrain is gone. I just, I don't love this. I don't, I do not in any way, shape, or form love this, uh, this plaza, and it pains me to say that because... You know, someone, someone somewhere worked very hard on this, I'm sure. And I'm just sitting here like, no, that ain't for me. That ain't for me, but it just, it just ain't. Uh, I think, I think I am going to have to commit to this idea of somehow making this plaza work in this space. So, step one here, of course, is just painting over the entire thing with concrete. So that I can uh, outline it and then put in the decal grass. And uh, I guess step two is actually going to be moving this guy a little closer to the uh, to the the pavement. The, what's the word? The path right there, so that it can uh, hopefully line up with the concrete. But that actually doesn't look too good. So we'll just move it to about there. And yeah, I'm just going to have to bring some of the retaining walls around this as well. So this guy is going to have collisions off. And is going to come back to about there. This guy's going to come over to, I guess, about there. And now I just need to make everything line up, which is going to be slightly tricky because I'm pretty sure these retaining walls will pick up the color of the decals underneath them. Yeah, so I can't go too far on this one or it is going to get a little bit weird. Uh, so that's probably about as good as that's going to be. This side actually doesn't look too bad at all. 
So what we can do is just lower it all to this height. And yeah, that retaining wall is uh, is all sorts of messed up. So we actually need to move it back just a little bit to get the texture off the top of it at least. And that does give me some grass back there that I don't love, but that's probably fine. Uh, what I will do is just something a bit like this so that I can go ahead and get, well, maybe we, maybe we take out this section and what we do is actually bring some kind of path around this entire thing. That might not be, that might not be a terrible idea at all. It would mean that this thing is, I guess, going to have people going around it. And it would mean that it'll look a little bit less weird. And actually what I'm realizing here is I don't have any paths going around this space at all right now. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, which is going to mess up all of the, uh, all the paths a little bit. But if I do this, we might actually see people walking through this space. And I think that would look really good. So I'm going to move this guy just down to about there. So people aren't going to be walking right on those planters. Uh, this one is fine. And this one just needs moved into the space between the retaining walls. So if I just move this along to here and I grab this guy and move it along to about there, we might end up seeing people walking around there. There's no guarantees. There's absolutely no guarantees, but if we could see people walking along there, it would look really cool and I'd be really excited about it. So let's, I'm not going to say, you know, hold our breath and wait for good things here, but let's, uh, let's hopefully wait for good things here. Now I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually so pleased with how this little space has turned out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, especially with that different grass in there. It just makes it pop a little bit. It's a bit more unique and a little bit weird, which I've said before is kind of what we're aiming for with uh, this particular series. We're doing some weird things. We're doing some interesting things. And so I think that's going to be a really nice little space for a, uh, a cafeteria and plaza. We're also back up to, well, actually, we're doing really well in terms of uh, what the campus is doing right now. We have 1,163 students at Nerdholm Institute. The campus attractiveness, admittedly, needs to be higher, which is a bit of a pickle. Not really 100% sure how to do that. I guess the futsal club might be... Uh, might be one way to do it, but I don't really know. I don't know what a futsal is. I have no idea. I also don't know what this looks like. It's, um, it's not a great looking little, it's a really weird looking little building, actually. I mean, I guess it's like a, a sports thing or something, probably. So maybe it, well, actually, I did put a little path back there. I was a little bit sneaky and did put a path in just in here, so... What if I went and took out these trees and I said that that's where the futsal club goes? Like at the back of the gymnasium. That that kind of makes sense to me. Although I just want to move it so that that like wall segment isn't uh, in a weird spot. And now interestingly, that actually has pushed us up to a place where the campus is going to upgrade again. So that's kind of wonderful. And I'm, I'm really so pleased with how this place is uh, is turning out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm so surprised that I, I like this. I really am. I'm so surprised that I'm, I'm okay with how that looks. I wasn't expecting to be. Uh, the only thing at this point that I don't love is honestly this. I don't really know what to do with it, but it does provide attractiveness, and so that's that's kind of a thing. I guess... I guess I could maybe surround it with, uh, I don't know, some, some retaining walls to make it feel a little bit more, I don't know, planted in the, uh, in the area. I'm not too sure if I do want to do that. I could also connect it to some of the existing paths so that we have people walking through it, because right now it does feel a little bit disconnected from everything. But I could also just do, like, two of them if I really wanted to. I think two of these things would be would be interesting for sure. 
I mean, for example, could I get one in there? No. I could get one back there, though, behind those dormitories. And actually, I, I think having one of these behind at least one set of dormitories might be a really good idea. So let's grab this. Let's go to, I guess, right about there. And we can just sort of, we can put a little, a little loop around the dormitory there, which I think is great. And then this guy can just go right in the middle of that back wall. And actually that looks so much better in that spot than it did over there. So this is perfect. Let's, let's bring some, uh, some walls or some paths rather. I can't get my words right today. Bring some paths out and around this. So just like that. And I think I am going to try and plant this in the space a little bit. I think for one, leveling this out, so selecting buildings and nodes is, is going to be a pretty good idea. So something like that, so just so it's nice and flat in there. We can hit it with a bit of a smoothing brush as well, just to make sure everything around it is still pretty good looking. And then actually, hmm... This guy right here might need to be brought forward just a tiny little bit. In fact, I think the way to do this is, is probably to try and line up the, the path before connecting it around. So I want to say there. I think, I think that's about a good spot. I don't know if that's actually the same as what it was before, but I think that's fine. And then, yeah, we can... I guess just plant this thing in here. We can go and put a bunch of the concrete retaining walls around the paths. We can put it around these paths as well. And we can just make this place feel really solid, which is kind of what I want it to feel like, right? That's what it should feel like. It should feel solid. And once again, some concrete retaining walls just help make something feel a little bit more planted in its environment. Of course, a couple of colorful trees help as well, and some uh, pine trees help to shake things up a little bit. But I actually love how this space looks. I really just love how the entire university campus looks right now. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't lie. I am slightly disappointed that the, the student count dropped so drastically, though. But uh, that might be because we might actually have another death wave? No, we don't. I did see a couple. Oh yeah, we do have a couple of dead people over here, but I don't think that's a death wave coming through. So I'm not really too sure why the student count dropped that drastically, but that's okay. It's it's not the end of the world. I think this is uh, I think this is fine. I think this looks just really it just looks really cool. <laughs> it's 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 kind of looking exactly how I hoped it would. And you know, from above it's 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 coming together. It is really, uh, it is really starting to come together, so that does make me really happy. Um, what I think I will do, though, just before we move towards wrapping things up for today, because I think, I think the right thing to do would be to, uh, not start another project today, because the next project I have in mind is to extend Manor Trail around this, uh, this coastline here, which I do want to do, I just, I really... I don't want today to be a complete clone of last episode, so I'm not not gonna be doing that today. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do it in a in a future episode is what we'll do. Uh, but what I do want to try and do here is I want to bring uh, this path around here, and I'm gonna use this as a bit of a border, and I'm gonna use it as a border to allow me to put more trees in this space. It's also obviously going to allow students to cross over from here to here pretty quickly. And uh, if I wanted to, I could connect those together as well, which I don't really want to do, so I'm not going to. But uh, it is going to let me just once again go in with a whole bunch of trees and, and make a space feel the way I feel it should feel. That was... the word feel was in that sentence way too many times, but you uh, you probably... You, you've, you've been... You've been following this series thus far. I'm pretty sure you know what I mean when I say things like that, right? That's... I'm, I think we've got to an understanding, you and I. Wait, what happened to the rest of my path? Hello? <laughs> I was using that. All right, well, we'll go ahead and do this. Then we'll do this. 
and that seems fine. A little bit of a hill there, actually, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I wanted to, I could uh, go ahead and just grab all of those nodes and create a little bit of a slope, which I think is pretty good. And we can also go ahead and just make those corners a little bit more gentle. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go in here with a very small node helm main brush and do this really and it does it does give it a bit of an overgrown vibe i think there might be too many trees in there so we'll bring that strength down and we'll just ever so slightly trim this uh just to make it a little bit a little bit more contained uh but that's that's kind of the vibe that i want right you have this really open space surrounded by these trees and then you know, we have space here for students to walk around. We have this space as well. That is that is exactly what I wanted from that. Uh, this space here might end up going a similar way, to be quite honest. Although, I do wonder if we could get maybe some kind of... Uh, I don't know, some kind of park in here would be really interesting. But I don't... This has to be in a park area. So the only things I can place in here are actually university buildings. And uh, my choices for university buildings are a little bit limited. We have got groundskeeping that could go, you know, back here a little bit. Which uh, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but it's it's not exactly what I want to put in there. There's not really that many decorations either. We have got uh, whatever this is, the historical library. And we've got a faculty building. But I th I'll tell you what, let's just put some trees in here. Let's go for a slightly stronger brush, and we'll just do this. And uh, honestly, as as silly as it looks to have things that overgrown, and it, it maybe is a little bit dense, I don't, I don't totally hate it. I really don't. I like that we're kind of trying to continue this this nature through this thing, but we also have these these open spaces. It just, I don't know. This university makes me really happy. And uh, to be honest. I, I am going to be completely honest with you. I kind of, I kind of needed this today. Today's been one of those days where I've just been, oh man, we might be about to get into something here. Um, it's been one of those days where, uh, just as a note before I go into this, I'm not about to sit and do this entire project here. I'm just preparing for, uh, you know, when I do get around to doing this. Um, today has been one of those days where I've just been kind of sat around. You know what? I am going to place some, place some stuff in here. I've been sat around just trying to do things. I've been trying to uh, trying to record videos and trying to work and, and trying to do all that stuff. And just none of it's worked, annoyingly. It's It's been a very frustrating day in that sense that a lot of the stuff that I've, I've tried doing has just not been good enough. And whether or not it's actually not good enough or it's me sort of just being stuck in my own head about it is... I, I don't really know. I don't have an answer to that, but... I, uh, at the time I'm recording this, I've been awake for, I want to say 19 hours, if not longer, probably, a, probably a little bit longer than that. And, uh, most of that time has been sat trying to work. And I know that's, that's, that's not healthy. And I, I'm, I'm well aware of that, but it's been one of those days where I've been trying and trying and trying to, funnily enough, record this video for the most part and just failing to do so not really for any one reason i've just been feeling a little bit meh recently uh my health hasn't been quite as as good as i'd like it to be uh i'm just sore a lot of the time i am talking to my doctors about it i mentioned earlier about the voice thing as well like just just a lot of health things in a relatively short space of time have just been like yeah yeah you're uh you're 30 in a year. That's that's kind of what it feels like my body's doing. It's like, hey, just remember, you're 30 in a year. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I like it, but uh, yeah, it just it just sucks. It's just it's just been one of those days where I kind of needed. I, I've been wanting to work and I've been wanting to be productive and I've been wanting to get stuff done. And I just haven't got stuff done. I haven't been productive. I And then I did this and then I sat down at, you know, whatever, like five in the morning or something. I don't know what time it is. And uh, we've built, we built all of this and we built all of this. And it's actually a really nice feeling to uh, 
actually get this stuff done. It's it's a really, really nice feeling. And I will say, I know it sounds silly in a way, being like, hey, I'm, you know, recording a YouTube video, recording, you know, playing a video game, it's really hard. It's, uh, I, I, I know it's, you know, it's, it's a weird thing to complain about, right? This is the job that I, I wanted to do and that I, I do love doing. It's just, it's not even a job thing. It's, that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to complain about like, oh, I have to play City Skylines. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that. It's just, um, it's just been one of those days. You know, I, I sit down to record cities or do whatever and it's just I, I do get in my own head sometimes about these things and it's like man that episode wasn't very good or that episode wasn't very good or something wasn't very good and I just I want them to be good you know I want them to be fun episodes and I want, I want people to have fun with them and I also want to have fun with them so it's kind of a it's a matter of making sure that the the stuff I'm doing is 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 fun and that's also kind of the point of it right these these videos are I, I try not to talk about this stuff because these videos I know for some people are kind of an escape from whatever they might be going through. So I don't want to, I don't want to like pile on and be like, hey, you're having a bad day. Let me tell you about my bad day in the thing that, you know, you might use to get away from your bad day. I don't want to, I don't want to, don't want to be that guy. But uh, I guess, I guess what I'll say is very plain and simple. We all have bad days. And that's, that's how I'm going to look at uh, what my day has been. It's just been a bad day. And, uh, you know, there's always tomorrow to uh, record a bunch more videos or do that thing that you want to do, right? That's that's how I'm going to look at it. And I also, I kind of, you know, I was going to say low key, but kind of high key. Love this. Love this. This is really cool. I kind of want to raise it up, though. Just make it a little bit, a little bit more water. Let's see what happens if I put a little bit more water in there. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's really cool looking. Tell you what I'm going to do, actually, just to give a little bit of detail to this. And this is going to be the last thing I do, because if I don't, I am going to build so much stuff in uh, in this episode. And it's going to be ridiculous. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, which is a, I think it's counted as a road, right? I'm not. 100% sure what the nodes are on this thing. It might be others or something. Uh, whatever it is. I'm going to raise it to this height. And I'm going to bring the whole thing up. And if you look at it, it's a tunnel. And that reminds me. I forgot to show you something else I did between these, <laughs> this episode and the last one. I uh, I saw a comment that was like, hey, you should make this road visible. And so I did. And I used those tunnel things to like make it look like there's actual tunnels there. Because they the road just goes into a straight wall, which you can see. But I also put some lights in there because I thought it looked really cool. So, yeah, that was a, that was a suggestion in the comments. But uh, I'm kind of going to use the same idea here. So I'm going to put this thing here. And what I want to do is lower it to this height. And then lower it right down. Something like that. And it's not, it's not natural looking. But it is... It is like a, it's, it's kind of like a water source in a way. It, I don't like, I don't think this is like, it's not a sewage outlet. I will say that this isn't supposed to be like a sewage outlet. I, I don't really know what it's supposed to be, uh, but maybe there's like an underground river, right? Maybe there's a little stream that runs underground from the lake and uh, we've channeled it to come out here. That's, that's what we'll say is happening. It's, it's not a sewage outlet. It's a little underground river that has its outlet right here. And, and that's okay. That's that's what this is supposed to be. I'm also going to put some rocks around it. Because I think it's going to look really good. If it has some rocks. And I think it's also going to look really good if I put some uh, some foliage around here. So, a couple of rocks. Just to uh, detail the, uh, the edges of the water. Which, I think that looks alright. And then in terms of plants. We'll go for this guy. We'll go for, for this guy. And just a couple of them amongst the uh, amongst the rocks there to make this feel like there's uh, there's some life in this water and uh, honestly I love that I really do I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put some plants just sort of in the tunnel as well I don't know if it's gonna let me I'll tell you what we'll just leave it be we'll not go too crazy with it uh, I do need to delete the uh, the floating one here and I think that looks great I think that's gonna be a beautiful extension of manor trail but we're not gonna be doing that 
today. Because honestly, that is going to do us for today. I don't know how long this episode's going to turn out. I feel like I ranted and rambled a lot. So this might be a long one. And on one hand, I apologize. On the other hand, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been an absolute pleasure. As always, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.